first of all, in terms of personnel, how's it looking tomorrow? Yeah, it looked unfortunate. We lost Andrew Obamadeli. Um, he got a little nick on his hamstring. Um, so that was unfortunate. He's obviously had a, you'd say, a decent enough season with Notts Forest and established himself for a good bit and then obviously was out of the team a little bit towards the end of the season. But he was um, one we were obviously potentially looking to get some game time into as well over the next two games. But it's just a case of at the minute, because of um, Boston being involved in training with us, he'll come into the match day squad as well, so he'll be involved. Um, he's done very well in training, he's settled in well. And uh, he'll be he'll be in the match day squad tomorrow, Boston. You're going to be with a number of players from the last game. Was, was it always your intention to, to to mix it up for tomorrow anyway? Um, ah, well, not in the sense of if you're talking, if you have Nathan Collins, Evan, uh, Gavin, Chidozi, um they're they're good lads, and they'll always be coming into contention. So my my thought process has been very simple to pick a team to to go and beat Hungary. You mentioned that. Uh, Mark was going to be around the, the camp again. Have you had any conversations with him about things past, present, future? <laughs> Look, there's always Mark was uh, in and around it for a couple of days. Um, it's straightforward. The conversations have been about the preparation and about the game, and um, we'll have conversations afterwards with with anyone uh, that I feel I need to. But would you expect some clarity or? more clarity by the end of this week? Yeah, look, let's hope so. Let's hope so. I think everyone, including uh, myself, the staff, the players, everyone would like uh, the clarity on it. Do you feel there's a lot riding on the results? Obviously, the friendly games, you want to win every game, players the same, but, but for you personally, is there quite a lot riding on the results of these two games? Mm. Well, look, it, you can. people can fl flip that. Whatever game we come into, I'm always looking for good results. Um, it was the case when we played Belgium at home, we were wanting to win. Playing Switzerland, we wanted to win, and it's the same. Um, we want to beat Hungary. We want to get. We want to get the Irish team winning again. Simple as that. Get the mindset right in terms of winning the games at home, especially. That's that's the big thing because if you if you know you're back winning matches, um, Donny Goldman has that saying. I think does he? Jimmy's winning, Jimmy's winning the matches. Um, so look, that's the big thing for me. We got to get winning matches. What do you expect from Hungary? A very tough game. Um, you see, obviously they've qualified um, for the Euros, and the kind of mixture in the squad in terms of younger, talented players that are obviously some in the Premier League that we, we would know about, and obviously different players around Europe, and also the run of form, the run of form that they're on, um, the teams they've they faced. So we know it's a it's a good test for us, really good test, and one of the players and the staff are looking forward to. Next question, guys. Ed? Yeah, John, how are you doing? How are we doing? recent history, I suppose, has shown um, the team have struggled at this time of year with performances. Uh, looking back to the European Euro, Euro two years ago, Greece last year. Um, how has that come into your way of approaching this game? And obviously, last year there was sort of extra time with training camps and stuff. How long have you had with the team? And you know, how, how are you approaching that? Sort of yeah, stuff? look, it's, as you mentioned, it's, it's an awkward one in terms of when players in different leagues finish, um, whether it be in England um, or in Europe. So it is a little bit tricky, but look, that's down. We have plans in place with our fitness coach, with Damien, and the lads obviously follow that through. And it's um, it, it, they, they came into the camp, nearly all the squad last Thursday, and you get to see them. We have a little session just to get their legs going again. You see where players are at. So look, that won't be any... Um, that won't be a, an, an excuse for us. We'll be the the team will be more than ready. The squad will be more than ready um, to be fully at it and fully prepared to cause hungry problems. I'm just reflecting on the Switzerland game. Um, you didn't get the result in that match, but what positives can you take from it to bring into this camp? And I suppose where would you like to see the improvements from? The performance? Yeah, scoring goals would be the the big one, but also um, if you think about it. We limited Belgium and Switzerland to very few chances. Um, our goalkeepers were, if you think about it, it was a set piece that we lost out to on Switzerland. Um, so we limited them, two very good teams, to a small number of chances. And that will hopefully be the case again, that we want to do that. We have to be difficult to beat. 
but also we have to have a bigger threat as well. Um, and that's that's the key to winning matches, obviously taking your chances when they come, because we got really good chances in both games as well. And just a quick one for Seamus. Seamus, obviously you would have played with, alongside a much Tom Cannon developing. Um, what, can, what can he bring to the Ireland squad and what sort of player and character is he? Yeah, firstly character, really good lad. Um, obviously came through at Everton with him and watched him go out and loan to Preston and score some goals and, and come back to Everton. And He's a player maybe I thought would have stayed around Everton for a bit longer, but wasn't to be. And um, very good finisher, very fast, and um, yeah, wants wants to do well, and wants to have a career in the game. So um, very excited by him. And as I said, uh, one of his strongest attributes for me would be his finishing. He's a really good finisher. Thank you. Any live? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is the main reason? What do you think? What is the main reason that the Hungarian team is uh, unbeaten for uh, 14 games? Yeah, good question. Um, I think in terms of, uh, obviously, first and foremost, good organisation, um, good quality, their players, and you think of uh, Sabozalai and Salai, their um, good attacking threats and organisation of the team has been impressive, but they have a, they have a freedom, a freedom to play also, that's, uh, that's impressive, and um, it's a, a I didn't want to say hunger. Um, they have a desire to uh, to work really hard as a team. The unit you see them when they recover to get back in and defend. So um, no, it's, look, any team international level, you go on a run like they've been on. You know they're doing uh, they're doing something right. And the other question is, uh, what do you like to see improve in your team? Yeah, it an improvement will be. Again, to carry on the good work from the performances against Belgium and Switzerland in terms of that solidity in the team, our compact shape, but also to hurt teams to score goals, get that confidence in hitting the back of the net and uh, getting the firepower on the pitch to do that as well. And But to, to keep that solidness in the team, to know that we have the confidence that we're not going to concede many chances but we've got to start creating more chances and hurting teams by scoring goals. And to Colin, uh, do you know the Hungarians uh, from the Premier League? Yes, of course. One of them being my neighbour in at Liverpool, who is a is a very good player, very strong player. Obviously, we've done our, our homework on him, and uh, we've been showing some clips. And uh, obviously, very very good player, and uh, obviously played against a left back at Bournemouth as well, who very attacking full back. Um, it's difficult to play against, but um, you know, 14 games unbeaten means they've got quality all over the pitch as well. So um, you know, it's going to be a tough game for us, and uh, a game that we're really looking forward to as well. My other question is, uh, uh, what new thing did uh, Oshi bring to the national team? Uh, you know, I've done an interview before there, and um, I know he's sitting beside me here, but <laughs> his um, preparation has been unbelievable, and not just the gaffer, but um, you know, Paddy, Glenn, Rennie as well, all the staff have been very, very good and uh, it's been um, exciting, you know, refreshing and like the manager touched on, you know, we, we, we weren't far away from winning some of them games but that's what it's about but that's what we're working towards and um, everyone's really enjoyed it and as I said, I've got nothing to gain from that, I'm 35, my time is coming short, I'm just speaking honestly and uh, the manager's been brilliant and, and really refreshing. Hi John. Um, How are you doing, Neil? Just think the lads were late. Uh, Troy, Adam, and uh, Mark and Josh. Are any of them out of uh, consideration for tomorrow? Well, Mark, Mark Travers won't be, uh, won't be in in the mix. Um, but the rest, all the rest of the boys you said, um, Josh, Troy, and Adam. Adam. Yeah, all, all ready to go. Cool. And uh, on Boston, like obviously, the most striking thing is his physique. Uh, but there's a lot more to that. Can you speak about? What he brings to the table and where he sees can he be a centre half as well as the centre mid? Yeah, yeah, that's the uh, impressive thing. I'm sure. Obviously, I've been watching him, but Seamus would be uh, would have faced him in terms of up against him in training or uh, having to challenge against him. He's obviously um, a strong lad, but also you see the delicate touches he can produce as well, and he can glide past past players as well. And um, he's. Uh, he did a couple of things in training yesterday where he's matching runs, stopping runners, um, whether it be centre fast, centre forwards, fast, fast wingers, fast tens. They uh, they struggle to get past them as well. So 
no it looked really exciting but also you know that he's uh, he's got to keep developing too and hopefully uh, he's had good experience at Fleetwood and then he'll go back and uh, see what happens at Celtic but hopefully um, we, we maybe get a chance to see him tomorrow you never know I know like maybe the team has been relegated from League One. It's not normally when you ask for someone to step up to senior international football. Mm. But is he somebody you, you kind of identify as he's got a great chance and you maybe promote him ahead of time? Or? Yeah, well, look, possibly, but also you know that there's there's good lads there that have um, that have had good seasons as well. That um, it's not be a case, it'll be a case of anyone anyone that plays tomorrow or gets on the pitch at any stage will have really deserved it in terms of. Um, I spoke about it. Anyone that plays in that eleven or starts in that eleven because of look, we see the training. I know you can talk about. I mean, my eyes on it, Paddy's eyes on it, Glenn's eyes on it, Renny Gilmartin's eyes on it. Um, Pete Shuttleworth, obviously our analyst coach this time as well. Um, his eyes on it. Somebody will be in the team if we know they're going to help us win the match. It'll be as simple as that. Whether it's what whatever age or. Uh, our profile they have. Next question, guys, raise the hands. Gary, thank you. John, what are the benefits of June Prendis from a manager's perspective? Um, well, getting to getting a relationship, getting to know players as well, whether it be newer players, getting them to settle into the group. Um, we obviously we fully focused on Hungary, but then you get the chance a couple of days later, you you travel away, um, and you have an amazing test of facing one of the possibly one of the favourites to win to win the Euros as well. So you get a chance to see players under adversity um, in terms of the challenge that that will bring, not to mention obviously the challenge of Hungary. But you, you get a chance to build a group, uh, get the confidence among among the group, getting players to know each other, seeing how senior players, um, how they train, how they behave around the hotel and the situation, how they cope with things. Um, so it's, it's a combination of things because ultimately you want as much time with the players as you can but you have to re be respectful of um, the time of the season and obviously taking care of the lads too for physical reasons and finally um, what difference would a victory over Hungary or, uh, or Portugal make to this young team? Oh, look, as I mentioned it'd be, it'd be massive and that's f f first and foremost is Hungary we're doing all we can to get the win against Hungary, um, and it'll be a case of just start building some confidence for uh, for the games coming after that. First and foremost, it, it'll be Portugal, but then when you think of uh, England, Finland, and Greece as well, they're they're difficult games, but ones that as a player you would want to be involved in because obviously they're they're so important to the country. Maybe John as a manager, I'm sure he'll be involved as well. Those games in the autumn, uh, but that's to be decided down the road. Um, did you talk to Sammy Snodgett at all about uh, this game? Insofar as Hungary were looking, there was some suggestion that Hungary manager wanted him. Uh, did you have that conversation with Sammy? I think back in March. Or no, uh, no, but it, it was straightforward with, with Sammy in terms of uh, just going to see him play a good few times and knowing what type of player he was and how he could help the team, help the squad. And obviously the form he was in, but no, I only spoke to Sammy in the sense of, um, well, for this window in particular, if he needed to, um, with any things that make, because obviously there's lots of talk about where he could be going or not going, and if he needed any, any help, that that wouldn't be wouldn't be an issue if he needed to to go, if there was something happening that it, in terms of if he was going to move anywhere, or if he was not going to move, or if there was bids in for him, that we'd 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 obviously be more than happy to. Support him if there was anything happen, but he's been training really well, and uh, he's available for for selection tomorrow against Hungary. I think he impressed a lot of people in the two games in March with his mm. energy, his, his movement. He, he really seems like he wants to seize this moment. Without a doubt, and y you would do when you're in that vein of form in terms of uh, scoring goals, um, and obviously attracting a lot of attention. But he look, he's he's come into the group and he's uh, he's really enjoyed it. I think that anyone that comes in like that, the players are respectful because when they see him in training, they see his movement, his finishing, and they see uh, the type of lad he is. He's he's settled in really well. There's one for Seamus, mate. Uh, did you enjoy your Tottenham Park experience, Seamus? Uh, watching the, the not the Sligo Rovers fans support, uh, cheering a very important win. 
in yeah. the night and uh, it just it struck me that yeah, if you're watching them and they're winning that's where it all began for you you know yeah, no, listen, it was a great opportunity for me to get back and, and watch uh, Sligo Rovers because obviously don't get the opportunity much, but still have that warm connection to the, fo- to the football club. Played a massive part in my journey and I'll always be grateful and thankful to them and uh, really enjoy going to the game. Obviously, Sligo got the win, which maybe wasn't expected, which uh, was great because they needed it, I think. And a um, couple of good results for them now, back to back. So um, it was good, really enjoyed it. and. I think it's great going back to watch League of Ireland too, and I think it's getting better all the time. Just one more, if I may. Um, you mentioned your time is coming short, but hopefully you keep going as long as you can. Um, if you wouldn't mind, you, 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 we just want this at the, uh, the Sky sponsorship launch, but uh, would you like to see the man beside you give him a chance at this full time, with your manager job full time? Yeah, like I said, I, th- I think I can answer it honestly without it looking like you know he's picked me in squad, so I'll, mm-hmm. I'll pick him up in the right way. I just. <clears throat> the way he's been with around the hotel, the way he's been with the younger players, uh, but not just that, the preparation, the work going on behind the scenes, like I touched on with the manager and all his staff, and um, he really cares for his country, he's seen that as a player, seen how many times he's he, he played for his national team, turned up all the time, but listen, we can all understand and see how, how proud he is to be in the position, and as players, listen, we'll do all we can at all times to, to win for Ireland, no matter what, but... Um, I think uh, the the man beside me is as fit for the job as anyone else. To be completely honest with you, and um, you know I can't speak highly enough of him as a, as a as a man, but also now as a as a coach and a manager as well would be a big word because the way he manages the group has been very very good. Kevin, Seamus, just just on that, has Mark Cameron, the FAI, given you any assurance that a massive game in September seventh against England? If they change the management between now and then, can you adequately prepare? Um, listen, it's a it's a it's a funny bubble we're in, in in this in this job. You know, at a club level, I've been through about I don't know how many managers over the last seven eight years. You know, we've got a, a way of adapting to things. Of course, it's not ideal. And listen, these games would be great if we could get a couple of results and 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 help the manager here. And um, if not, that's all that stuff is, is out of my hands. And like I touched on, any time I put on the green shirt or the lads put on the green shirt, um, as much as you do it for managers, you've got that pride within yourself, you've got that inner determination and uh, that passion for your country that you'll always do all that you can to prepare for them games and to win them games. But um, we'll see where that we'll see where that brings us. But as of now, we're we're focusing on Hungary and, and Portugal and. And uh, hopefully the manager can get a couple of results in that game. Like in February, the CEO of the FAO, Jonathan Hill, said it's, it's vitally important that these four friendlies are used as preparation for the England game. Just as players, is there any concern, or have you, you don't have to say what it was, but have you had your concerns allayed even about that, about how you're going to prepare for just a huge game of football in September? Yeah, massive game of football, like I touched on there. Uh, us footballers have got a way of um, you know, putting things like that to the side. It's bigger it's bigger than us as players you know that's not our job and if I got focused in you know the other side of it you know I, I've stayed focused at club level with a lot of noise around the club for a long time and uh, as players if we didn't stay focused at that uh, I'm sure you know the season wouldn't have finished the way it did for us as, as Everton footballers because there's so much noise around it so as players the way football is now you've got to um, always find a way of doing what you can on the pitch and the rest isn't our job to be to be completely honest with you and uh, as I said get a win tomorrow would be ideal and uh, see where it takes the manager. Finally Aidan, uh, just two for John, gentlemen, Steve Kenny was here he referenced the challenges of the June window in terms of managing the workload and training and the gaps and everything else and tweaking things as he went on. From your time as a player, do you remember June windows because you often came in after the hard season of Man United yeah. in Europe do you remember times when June was tough? Having anything lessons from that as a player that you want to bring in now as coach? Yeah, look, it's just getting the balance right, Aidan. As you mentioned, in terms of whether it be certain players that have uh, how long they played up to. Um, obviously, look, Troy coming in. Um, obviously, he's played last night and obviously scored his goals. And but unfortunately for his team, it didn't work out. But the, the vein of form he's in, so it's just obviously he won't be. He'll just be able to watch training today and then get his recovery done and be uh, be available then tomorrow so it's just a balance of understanding players workloads many games they've been involved in playing etc and um, if they needed extra work seeing what they're like with my eyes and training in terms of are they ready to start 
are they ready to come on and help, whatever the case may be. So it's just getting the balance right with that in terms of intensity in the training and when to stop it, time on feet. It's You want to get work into players' preparation that you've done, areas that you hope you can exploit in the opposition, but also understanding that they've got to be ready to do it on Tuesday night as well. Second question about the squad, you mentioned Troy and even a couple of players in Troy did really well score goals even though they didn't stay up, but Adam Media, Michael Buffetti, Michael Johnston possibly mixed forces mm -hmm. for Michael, but when they were focused on the games, do you speak to them about what, what they need to do? I'm not naive enough to think that somebody's going to sign them on the basis of a good performance tomorrow, but <coughs> they can't have done it all season the way that maybe it was for them last year. Sorry, what was the end bit there? You know, like, what, do you chat to them about what they need to do with the likes of Troy Parr to make sure that in September he's in a good place? Yeah, and that's, that's the tricky part because ultimately even some of the younger players that when obviously in where you're marking lads would say high potential and hoping that they but when they go back to their clubs how quickly they can impress a new manager or impress a current manager and then they're ready either if the plan is in place for loan spells that they get out to the club as quick as they can and not at the last minute that's the key bit that they are settling into a new club performing quickly because as we all know that um, that window when the league starts and then it, it, it's only a couple of weeks the next thing it's the international window so um, it's it's crucial that lads get into clubs as quick as they can but we know the game it doesn't always happen like that the bigger clubs are the the, the, the ownership club if you like to put it that way they have the right obviously to hold to the last minute if they're obviously transfer targets haven't come in or different ideas so but it's important that the players get out and play as much as they can, as early as they can, on the, if it is going to be a loan spell, because it's crucial for them. And also, just ultimately, when we're talking about a player that or players that I want to be in the squad or I want to be in the team, that they have to be the character, the, the, the resilience, they have to be that kind of, I suppose... Um, Talking about the other day with Jim Crawford in terms of uh, a bulletproof, um, everything about them, how they train, how they come in, how they perform around uh, their, the, in the game ultimately, but how they are around the place. It's, it's crucial because that will transform from their club. It will translate into the country for better performances, for them to simply get if, and make difficult decisions for me as a manager to, what what team am I picking? He's in great form. He's in great form, and then it, that that's the challenges that I want for the Irish team. That's the, that for the Irish uh, team going forward. Thank you very much, everyone. Cheers, gents.